to welcome each and every one of you to this very special conversation today with Dave Kirpin and Olivia Cascella of Apprentice. But before we dive in and I hand over the stage and we get to the topic that we're all here to talk about today, I do just wanna say a very brief word about the fourth floor. So for those of you who are not already members who don't already know, we are a, a marketplace and we match startups and companies to board ready women. We do this in a trusted, efficient and very cost-effective way. We are primarily uh, trying to overcome the systemic barriers that have kept women out of the board candidate pipeline. And we're also working really hard to overcome the systemic barriers that have kept women from writing checks and from getting funded. And we're doing that in our backroom private investment club. So if you are listening, to this and you are a founder of a startup or a company, please consider joining us so you can tap into the incredible talent pool of 1500 plus board ready women that we have. So you can build out your advisory and governing boards, find angel investors and do all of that in our board, in our board seat exchange. If you are an underrepresented founder, so a woman or a BIPOC led early stage startup, you can also join our back room where you can seek funding from our angels, LPs and women led venture funds. If you are a woman listening to this and you are interested in initiating or advancing your for-profit board career and or investing, you know, maybe angel or LP investing, then please consider uh, joining us, signing up for an individual membership. The next step is to come to a platform tour. We do them every single week, Mondays at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we will put that link in the chat right now. Sarah, if you would be so kind to do that um, so that you can sign up for a platform tour. Okay, so that, and, and that applies to if, if you are a founder of a company, all are welcome in the platform tour. We can really um, give you a peek inside and you can find out if membership makes sense for you. And then we can help you sign up when you come to the tour. So enough about us. Let's get to the point of today. So now I am thrilled to welcome to the spotlight, Dave and Olivia, if you can join me here in the spotlight, uh, to welcome Dave Kirpin, who is currently chairman and co-founder of Apprentice, as well as a serial entrepreneur a New York Times best-selling author, a global keynote speaker, an investor, and a writer for Inc.com. So truly uh, not a busy man at all. And uh, also Olivia Cascella, to welcome Olivia. She is a student at Cornell University in the School of Industrial and Industrial and Labor. And she is also head of partnerships for Apprentice, so also not a busy college student at all. So whether you are listening, whether you are an executive, a researcher, an entrepreneur, or maybe you're just simply curious about ChatGPT, this event and this conversation is for you. Chat uh, GPT is a lot of things, but above all, it really will be transformative when it comes to how we operate. And this is true across industries. This is true across job functions. Uh, but don't hear, don't listen to me. You're going to hear it from Dave and Olivia. And the last thing I want to say is just for those of you that don't know about Apprentice, Apprentice is very, very cool. Apprentice connects business leaders with rising college level stars like Olivia here to help you solve your business challenges. And because Apprentice is a partner with the fourth floor, Apprentice offers our community. So if you are part of the fourth floor, you're a founder of a company, you're an executive at a larger company, uh, Apprentice will offer 20% off your first three months of Apprentice through a link that we will share in the chat. Okay, so now I am officially done. Um, and let me hand over the stage to you, Dave and Olivia, please take it away. Thank you so much, Breen. So appreciate our partnership and um, the fourth floor and the work that you guys do. Um, I am a he for she um, and Olivia is a she and together I can't wait to chat with you for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, we are recording this so that answers uh, people's typical first question. Um, while I set up the slides, if you didn't already post in the chat, the size of your business and the type of your business, please post that in the chat. Very valuable, helps me um, and Olivia frame the content as best as we can. And I am going to share my screen and then I'm going to find the right uh, spot, which is not this, but it is this. 
Uh, if you can see my screen, post in the chat so that I don't talk about nonsense uh, and waste your time. Somebody post in the chat and let me know you can see my screen and I will hit you up with five ways to better use GPT presented by um, Apprentice and the fourth floor. Okay, let's rock. So, Green mentioned a little bit about me. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I love starting companies and then writing books about my adventures. Um, written four books. My fifth comes out um, in March. Uh, it's called Get Over Yourself. Um, I am also the co-founder of Apprentice, the company that uh, you're, you're meeting today, as well as Kip.ai. So Apprentice is really great for small businesses. And for those of you in the audience that uh, work for very large businesses, thousand plus employees. Um, if you're out there, um, Kip.ai is a consultancy that um, helps really large businesses with GPT and AI. I'm also a speaker, um, and perhaps most important for our partnership for uh, with the Fourth Floor, I am an investor to Kirk Ventures. We invest uh, exclusively in women and people of color founders. So feel free to hit me up on that link. If you're interested in an investment and you meet our criteria, of course, if you want to learn more about Apprentice or Kip.ai, you can click on those links. Um, and I want to introduce to you, Olivia. Hi, guys. I'm very excited to be here today. Thank you for all of the very warm introductions, Dave and Breen. Um, so my name is Olivia Casella. I am a rising junior at Cornell University. And in addition to that, I am the head of partnerships at Apprentice. And I also work on the sales team with Dave. So a little bit about my time with Apprentice. So I started Apprentice in January. It was actually a very funny story. I learned about Apprentice at a bake sale with some of my classmates. And it was a completely random thing, but it really did change my changed my second semester and changed my career outlook a lot. So my first, just a little brief introduction about my first apprenticeship. Um, so I started working for a mid-sized company around 100 to 200 people. Um, it was a pre-construction services company. And um, what mainly I mainly did HubSpot sales. So I became really good at learning how to navigate HubSpot, how to find leads and how to um, kind of recreate their marketing strategy for them. And I would send emails and calls and other marketing related tasks. And then I got the opportunity to become an apprentice for Dave and help him out with um, different partnerships with apprentice and different outreach strategies. And yeah, I really enjoyed my time here and it has really given me a lot to learn and a lot to think about for my career. Thanks, Olivia. And thanks for joining me today. I'm going to walk you through the plan for the next 45 minutes. Um, a little bit more about uh, Apprentice, of course, an intro to GPT. And then we're going to jump into the five focus areas uh, for today for how GPT can help optimize business functions. Um, we've got some bonus tools and helpful platforms at the end, so stay tuned. Um, and if that's not enough, we're giving away not one, not two, not three, but four books at the end as well. So stay tuned for that, as well as next steps and follow-up information. A little bit about Apprentice. Uh, we're an online platform that links college students like Olivia with business professionals like you to tackle challenges in areas such as marketing, business development, operations, and data analytics. Um, I'm really, really proud of the massive talent that we have and the, the the fact that we connect small businesses with talent that you frankly wouldn't have access to otherwise. Um, we've been in business for a few years now and um, have very quickly built um, a wonderful business with my partner who launched the business with me while he was in college um, at, at Hamilton. Um, we only take 5% of applicants. They have a super high GPA um, and they're from great schools. Olivia goes to Cornell, but we've got sampling of some of the top schools in the country that our apprentices attend. So let's talk about GPT. Um, it is Generative Pre-Training Transformer. Um, it's a specific type of artificial intelligence that um, is a large language model that learns from lots and lots and lots of data and then can have an interactive experience. Now, some folks, when they think GPT, they think chat GPT. In fact, Breen mentioned chat GPT earlier and we are going to use a lot of examples from ChatGPT because it is the biggest uh, most easily 
the most easy to use um, model. But I, I want to point out that GPT, chat GPT is a type of GPT. It is one of the, the it's the biggest in, 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 the, um, in the marketplace now. But just like when search engines first launched, and if you're as old as I am, you may remember search engines like Lycos and Hotbot, um, and that disappeared. And as Google became number one, uh, and, and, and in the social network space, Facebook wasn't first. There was MySpace and Friendster before it. ChatGPT is first and biggest, but there's lots of other uh, GPT models, including my personal favorite, Apprentice Bard from Google, because it has the word apprentice in there, um, and, and, and really quite a few here. So we'll use examples from ChatGPT, but know that GPT is the uh, bigger um, uh, a model that, that we're talking about. Before we get into the use cases, I want to show you uh, this video that for me really blew my mind. Um, I, I, was a, I was very, very fortunate to be an early uh, business user of social media, wrote, wrote one of the first books on social media, Likeable, likeable and uh, built one of the first agencies in social. And I, I realized social media would be transformative. When I saw this video, uh, that was my big, big mind-blowing moment where I realized how transformative uh, GPT would be. So let's let's take a look. Olivia, let me know if you can't if you can hear it or not. Hopefully, you can. So you remember the little volume thing at the bottom? Yeah. And grocery shopping. Let me show you. I told it that as my personal chef. And to create a five-day meal plan uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I gave it some preferences. And it did exactly that. Wait, it gets better. I told it to make a few adjustments and to add the ingredients for each meal. And here's the best part. I asked it to combine all the ingredients in a list that I can use while grocery shopping. And it used the Instacart plugin to generate this list for me. And when you click on this link, it opens up Instacart with all the ingredients preloaded, and you can add them all to your cart. And if you want to change the brand of something, you can just click on Show Alternatives and pick a better one. So yeah, this is the thing I hate doing every week, and it just got a lot easier. Cool. So he went in less than a minute from um, um, a nutrition concept to actual grocery items in his cart to be delivered to him using GPT. Just, just mind-blowing personal use case, at least for me. So today we're going to be getting into five ways to better use GPT in business. And so the we're going to go over specific ways small business owners like all of you and mid-sized business owners can specifically use GBT. So we're gonna go, go over content creation and marketing, customer service, training and onboarding, brainstorming and innovation, and competitor insights and analysis. So the first topic we're going to explore and show a few case studies is content creation and marketing. So um, the first thing that GBT ha can do and can really help businesses with is writing and theorizing blog posts, social media captions, and other writing tasks, if you will. So um, we'll get into a few examples, but GBT is really amazing that you can give it notes on what you want it to write, and you can give it specific um, guidelines for how to write it, a specific tone, a specific voice, and it will write exactly that. And you could keep regenerating it until it's exactly right. The next, next thing that GBT can do for content creation and marketing is suggest and research, research trending hashtags and um, I guess different tags and blurbs that would make your either social media post or captions stand out more. So um, there's a specific version of GBT, um, it's GBT 4.5, that takes information from like real time instead of being loaded with data. So you can ask GBT about specific trends that are going on at this current moment, which is really cool. And then the next thing it could do 
summarize and compare um, essentially any type of data, but in relation to content creation and marketing, you can, for example, copy and paste multiple customer testimon testimonials, and it will write you a summarization of those sentiments, and it could write you a description of what people are saying based on all of this different information, which is really cool. So um, we did a couple of examples to really show you guys what GBT can do. And so, um, as I mentioned before, you could ask GBT to write in a voice of someone. So for example, Dave has a lot of um, information or a lot of content already on the internet. So you can ask GBT to write in the voice of Dave Kirpin. So um, this makes my job a lot easier. But Dave did a podcast with Jim McCann, who's the, um, he has a podcast, the Celebration Chatter podcast. So he obviously made a few social media posts. So you could ask GBT to write a caption with fun emojis and hashtags and different ways to make your caption more live and more appealing to his audience. Yeah, I didn't realize I used emojis that much in my post, but but apparently GPT did. So so thanks for that. The emojis are fun though too. Like it adds a little you know pop of color to it. And I just put an article here of how GPT is really changing the game for content creation and how it can make content creation so much more scalable. So if um, a company, if your company is struggling to put out content um, like articles or blog posts or Sometimes it's hard writing social media posts and things like that. It could really exponentially increase the amount that you post. And so um, like kind of I referenced before, ChatGPT works best when you give it very specific prompts and very specific guidelines. So you can be as specific as you want. So in this chat or in this prompt, I gave it the exact amount of words that I wanted it to produce. And I give it gave it also like a title um, byline, I guess. And so, as you can see over here, please read a hundred word article about Apprentice's latest webinar titled Five Ways to Better Use GBT with your host. And so, if I wanted to market like uh, an event that we're doing like this for a business, that is how I would make it a lot easier and a lot more tailored to a specific audience. And that boost efficiency exponentially. Like if I had to um, come up with this on my own and edit it and all of that other stuff. Thanks, Olivia. For me, the, the biggest game changer is the fact that um, GPT models can write things in very specific voices. So we, we gave you the example of writing in my voice, but I for another example is I have a, a nursing media startup and we can we can have it write content in the voice of an ER nurse in the voice of an ICU nurse, in the voice of a Midwestern nurse, in the voice of a uh, uh, LA-based male nurse. It, it, it's, there's, GPT is as good as the prompts that you give it. And if you give it very specific detailed prompts, it can produce massively amazing uh, content. Oh, and did, third, we just have a question from the audience about that. So someone asked, can you feed GBT examples of a person's content and background stats in order to create a voice that may not be already on the web? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So the more info you give it, the more it will learn. I mean, they're, they're literally built to learn from data that you give it. So you, you, can, you can upload documents, you know, 500 page documents on on personas and then say, write something in this persona, right? So it's absolutely uh, very, very powerful in that way. Thanks for the question. The next area we're gonna jump into is customer service. I love this uh, for especially small teams that are looking to scale customer service um, and don't necessarily have enough uh, people to do that. GBT does a really good job of analyzing and categorizing customer feedback and reviews to give you summarized reports helping create responses to all potential customer inquiries, social media posts, emails, other forms of correspondence, and even writing out entire scripts for your customer call center and your web support center, walking, walking your customer support reps through exactly what to say in every possible scenario. So that's kind of work that would take 
many, many, many hours, man hours of work or woman hours of work, but that you can do very, very quickly using, uh, using GPT. Um, just as a, as a super quick example here, um, we said somebody, uh, we, we asked uh, ChatGPT to help us when somebody wrote that uh, chooseapprentice.com was hard to navigate. And I think, I don't know about you guys, but no matter how much I work on our websites, I'm always looking to improve it. And, um, and it gave us a very specific response to, to write back, which frankly was very helpful and, and, and usable in this case. Really loves those emojis of mine though. The thumbs up, that's fair. Um, Chat GPT can, can help you build, um, and GPT models can help you build bots that are better than ever before. I think many, many of us have experience with um, online bots that aren't so good, but what you're gonna see in the next 12 months is these bots get better and better and better at understanding personas, at understanding specific questions, at understanding all of the product information that you give it, and these bots are gonna get really, really good much, much better than you're seeing right now. So Dave, someone asks, um, how can a regular person learn how to program GBT to perform the customer service tasks you just mentioned? So, um, I mean, I can just say a really quick little tidbit before Dave goes into it. But as you saw on the previous slide, we showed a description from Zendesk. Um, it's another GBT platform. And so basically what it does, it puts like a little chat box on your website. So, um, on some of the bigger companies' websites, uh, it could be like chat with a representative live. So it's not actually a live representative, but you can put prompts into that chat box in order to answer it. So if it's, for example, someone writes in the chat box, like, how can I track my order? Um, you can program it to find those keywords and be able to predict the patterns of like what they're trying to say. And as for ChatGBT, the best way to kind of program it is to just experiment with prompts and what yields you the best um, possible response, you know, what type of tone um, it best um, is receptive to, and um, just other little details that you could add to it. Yeah, I was going to uh, basically echo the same, you know, like anything, the best way to learn is to practice and get get better and better at, at, at getting really good prompts. Um, I, I've, I've seen and heard lots of chatter online about, you know, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that, but it's really a matter of better prompts. It's as good as the, the, the output is gonna be as good as the input that you put in. Um, and of course, my somewhat salesy answer is if you don't wanna do all of the learning yourself and all the practice yourself, hire somebody like an apprentice like Olivia that does that does that learning for you and helps you and helps implement it um, for your company. Yeah. So someone just um, asked really quick while we're on the topic, taking Breen's question one step further, how do you make all of a company's knowledge articles um, and proprietary data to, com to combine with an LLM to create a customer service chatbot? So um, kind of building off of that, it, it's going to sound a, um, a little funny, but the best way to make ChatGBT aware of all your data is to post as much as you can on your website and your other social media posts because ChatGBT, that's just one example, takes it from the internet. So that's one way to boost it. But another way is just to directly post it. Oh, you said um, if it needs to remain private. Um, the best way is just to upload documents with that information to ChatGBT because your chats are private. That doesn't well, matter. it needs to be remain private. There, there's actually so privacy is going to be a major consideration in the in the months and years to come. And my prediction is that the um, the the comp the competition between large language models will um, help yield some some better privacy tools for big companies. Um, so short answer is there are some GPT models that you can um, keep information totally private uh, with and feel free to follow up with me directly for um, some rec specific recommendations on that. Um, I'm going to keep us moving. And while I love questions, uh, I think we'll, 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 we'll answer everyone's questions at the end. So just keep posting your questions in the chat and we'll, 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 we'll make sure we get to them at the end or we answer them uh, privately for you guys. But for time's sake, I'm going to keep us moving. Um, we talked about uh, um, 
customer service with respect to training and onboarding. Um, GPT can help you build interactive learning materials, mock case studies, real-time feedback, help recommend training topics, help block out entire training and learning sessions to help reflect modern day challenges that your company is going through and propose training questions and new perspectives. Here's an example. We wrote, please create a detailed one day program titled Introduction to GPT in the fashion industry for employees of my company that design sustainable fashion items for teens. The program's objective is to teach them how to use GPT to be more productive and efficient. And it built an entire day program with a morning session, workshops, lunch breaks, afternoon sessions, wrap up and Q&A program conclusion. Again, this is work that while, of course, this is a draft and I, I'm going to make some iterations to this. If I'm if I'm that fashion, uh, that sustainable fashion item for teens company, but this is work that would take days and it was done in seconds. Another example, let's say you're looking at sensitivity training um, for employees of that same company. Um, what type of sensitivity training is important? Um, here are nine different potential sensitivity training topics um, for employees of that company. And again, I may not want to um, implement all nine, but let's say I want to implement specifically an inclusive, inclusivity and body positivity training. I can then dive deeper into that and say, tell me more. What are five ways to do this? What are, um, I, I love to use prompts like, what are, what are five non-obvious ways to do this? Because the, I'm thinking of the obvious ones. What are the non-obvious ones? What are, the, what are five surprising ways to do this? What are five unusual ways to get this done? And, and really challenge uh, the model to think of things that I'm not thinking of. Okay, let's jump into brainstorming and innovation. So um, this is actually one of my favorite ways that GBT can help your business, just because it really gives you a lot of inspiration to build off of. So um, GBT can suggest creative names for products, articles, and events. So um, I like to think of GBT as, or Ed Dave says this as well, um, you can, it just takes what you do and does it a lot better. So you could give it a lot of notes of like what the event or article is about, and it'll come up with a cool, catchy title for it. And the next thing it could do is analyze potential strategies and propose ways to expand strategies. So if you are stuck on marketing strategies or any other strategy that you are trying to implement to your business, ChatGPT can really give you a lot of inspiration and even um, ideas that you actually implement. It could also respond to logistical creative and sensitivity problems immediately. So um, like if you give ChatGPT a problem, it can give you ways to solve the problem. And you know, one of those ideas might actually be something you implement or it may spark another idea that actually helps you solve the problem. So um, as a little test, we put into ChatGPT with access to data on 10,000 college students, brainstorm 10 possible products and services we can sell to small business owners. So um, at Apprentice, we have a lot of data about college students and um, about what industries they want to go into and their college history, you know, what clubs they're in, what their major is. And we could use that data to do these products and then services on the other side of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so me as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an owner, uh, a founder of the company, you know, we have a marketplace that connects college students with small business owners, but um, if I want to brainstorm about 10 other crazy ideas, um, I can put an input in here and get um, and get those ideas, right? And in brainstorming, there's nothing wrong. There might be one or two things in this list that I think, wow, that custom market research, I can sell the market research to, to big companies like Amex and MasterCard and Visa that'll pay big dollars for this. And all of a sudden, I have another possible use case for my existing uh, my existing data that I, I hadn't thought of. I, I, I think of all the use cases um, for, for GPT, brainstorming and innovation is probably my favorite. And it's, and it's the one that maybe people don't think of as much, but um, sometimes in my experience, employees are, are we adults actually, we, we tend to limit ourselves, we limit our thinking. And so brainstorming can be really tricky. 
Um, GPT knows no limits. They'll come up with some crazy stuff. Some of it might be completely off the wall. And, and by the way, we, I, you can respond to this prompt, to this output by saying, great, but now give me 20 more ideas that are crazier. Give me 50 more ideas that nobody would think of. And it'll just keep going, right? It's all a matter of how good the prompts are. And then um, this is actually a really cool slide too. So this is one of me and David, me, me and Dave's favorite slides. So we asked um, different strategies and tactics to attract more business and women to join the fourth floor effect, just to give you some ideas. And one of the, I guess, mentions was a webinar. And you know, this is what exactly what we're doing. Um, and obviously networking events and social media campaigns, but kind of like Dave said, these are a little more obvious ones and we could build off of that to get even less obvious ones. And this is one of my favorite also um, examples. So we said, I'm developing an app that delivers groceries to your house. What niche can I offer to the market? And these are actually some very cool niches. Um, when we were going over our presentation, Dave said that he would love to get groceries that are only keto, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so if anyone out there is an entrepreneur and, and likes this idea, please steal it and um, make me a, 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 a nutrition-based diet-specific grocery uh, ordering app, because that would be cool. And um, just to kind of build off something that um, we thought of earlier, so the prompt said that with access to 10,000 or to data on 10,000 college students, that was just more of a general prompt. But if we wanted to get more specific and say, I have this data and you post that into the chat, then you can get ideas specifically tailored to that data rather than saying just with data to this. You could also ask chat GBT for statistics and other data on college students if you wanted to use that to help a strategy. So ChatGPT can really be used both ways for data or you put data into it. Okay, and the last use case um, that we will discuss today in a little bit more depth is competitor insights and analysis. So understanding your competitors is something that's really important, but something that in my experience, especially for small business owners, it's we don't have time. We're so, we're so busy focused on our own business that sometimes we don't pay enough attention to our competitors. But with one or two prompts, we can very quickly understand what our competitors are up to, understand um, what they're doing in the news, what they're doing in social media, what their financials look like, um, what uh, trends to expect based on um, what, what, what publicly available information what the sentiment is around our competitors' products and services, uh, analyzing all the, cust all, the, all the customer reviews of our, our own customers, as well as our competitors' customers and feedback and all the online discussions about, about our competitors. Imagine being able to understand exactly what the issues are with our competitors' customers and our competitors' products so that we can do a better job with our own products. To me, it's um, really, really valuable stuff there. And of course, identifying from a marketing perspective, what keywords and SEO strategies our competitors are using so that we can implement similar. As a quick example for Apprentice, we, we, list, we said list the top five competitors of Choose Apprentice. Um, obviously, I'm familiar with all of these guys, but it was reaffirming to see. Um, and then we can dive deeper, of course, if we had more time. Tell me more about Handshake. Tell me about all of the um, online reviews of Handshake. Tell me about um, what 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 are the most what are the five most negative things that people talk about with Handshake. What are the three most positive things that people talk about with Handshake, etc. We did the same thing for the fourth effect uh, in the fourth floor, so that you guys uh, can see this. This could really work for any single company that has a website and that has um, publicly available information. And then again, you can dive much deeper as needed to any of the particular competitors that you want to analyze. Okay, uh, we are going to give you some bonus information a little bit, take Q&A and uh, do our grand prize giveaway. So don't go anywhere, but in the meantime, a quick uh, sales pitch for Apprentice, our sponsor for today. Um, if y'all want to schedule a free demo, if you use this link, um, the, you will receive not only 50% off 
uh, your first month with Apprentice. But if you are a fourth floor a partner, you will get 20% off um, your additional second and third month with us. Um, Olivia, if you can post that link in the chat too, that would be great for everyone. Um, and uh, we would love to chat with you more about your business and to see if Apprentice is a good fit for you guys in general. We work best with businesses between three and 100 employees. Um, as I said earlier, larger businesses may want to take a look at uh, Kip.ai, but um, Apprentice is really uh, has been a wonderful resource for um, small business owners and medium-sized business owners. So hopefully we'll get to chat with you. And I mentioned uh, Kip.ai. I started with um, my longtime mentor, uh, Thor Ernstin, who was the first developer and uh, uh, at Zynga and built uh, Farmville and Frontierville, really a brilliant um, uh, development developer mind. And for larger businesses that want to build their own GPT systems and really leverage massive amounts of data, uh, we'd love to chat with you at kip.ai. And um, that's probably more appropriate uh, potential resource for you than um, than uh, apprentice. Okay, as promised, some bonus ways to use GBT for business that perhaps you hadn't thought of. So some bonus ways you could use GBT that we kind of alluded to um, during the presentation, but just to give more context to them, you could do personalized product recommendations. So you can, like we said before, input data into ChatGBT, for example, a customer profile, and you can make that GBT bot or whatever platform you're using recommend a product for that person. And um, yeah, based on their browsing behavior and different preferences. You could also do dynamic pricing strategies. So kind of what we talked about with competitor analysis, you can ask GBT what the sentiment around a certain price point is for a certain product. And you could use that information to better situate your branding strategy and pricing strategy in the market. Supply chain optimization. So as we have spoke about that, GBT has incredible capabilities to make what you do more efficient. So it could create schedules for you and different uh, recommendations for inventory levels and demand forecasts and how to best be prepared for different things that will happen. Automated contract analysis. So you could also employ GBT to kind of um, summarize like the main aspects of a contract or an agreement quickly, just so you know um, kind of the key points of this. And this can be transferred to any type of document and um, agreement of some sort. Yeah, GBT is going to be disruptive in many, many, in every industry, but I think one um, industry that's going to be very early disruptive is the uh, legal and paralegal. The paralegal role will essentially um, go the way of the dinosaur, sadly, because of the ability to analyze very, very quickly, instantly uh, contracts and agreements uh, documents. And the next is just predictive maintenance for equipment. So GPT can tell you what type of equipment um, people are talking about and what they are saying about certain equipment if it has a shorter lifespan or if a certain um, part of it doesn't that a lot of people have figured out aren't working and just historical data of things that can help you in your decision process and your buying process. So we just included some helpful tools that um, we personally use for Apprentice, my work with Dave, so Copy AI and um, just a little bit about these um, platforms. So Copy AI is kind of, um, it's a GBT platform that writes specifically like articles and um, product descriptions, ads, and it specializes in copywriting. That's the name. Um, Dolly, Doll E2, it's kind of a funny word, but it is a platform that can create an image based on a prompt. So um, this is kind of a new um part of GBT is you can make certain images with uh, GBT related tools. So you could say, draw me an image of a girl reading a book or something like that, or some type of um, marketing thing for your business. So if you wanted to create images for your website or maybe for a blog post, you could create really cool images. 
And then Jasper, Jasper is another tool kind of like Copy AI that specializes in writing and different um, articles and kind of the difference between these tools, as we talked about before, is they're different levels of privacy, but also they're different levels of being receptive to notes, you know, like a different tone versus any other specifications that you would add. And then Bard is actually Google's version of ChatGBT and it, it uses real-time information. So I know we were talking before in the chat about outdated and um, other GBT models that use real-time data versus the ones like ChatGBT3 that uses data from before it was created. So ChatGBT 4.5 does use real-time data, but ChatGBT 3 does use data from before it was, well, when it was like being created. Um, but BARD is an example of one that uses real-time data. And then Shortly AI is um, an editing platform. So you could put an article in it and say how you want the tone to come across, what you want to emphasize, and it'll give you suggestions how to edit it and make it either more concise, um, more formal, other specifications. And then AI Dungeon, that's kind of a cool one. It um, creates uh, the unique storylines for different games or different um, things you could do with storylines. And you could give it specifications and it'll make a cool storyline for like a platform or something like that. Awesome, thank you, Olivia. Um, we do have time for a few questions. Um, and while we take your questions, I am also going to give away, as promised, not one, not two, not three, but four books. Um, my last three business, well, sorry, my last two business books, my next business book, that one does not come out till March on Get Over Yourself and How to Lead to, uh, del and Delegate Effectively for more, more Time, More Freedom, and More Success. And perhaps most important, um, my wife's book, Work It, Secrets for Success from the Boldest Women in Business. All four books could be yours. The only way to win is to post your email address in the chat. And as a bonus, anyone that posts their email, we will send um, the slides from this deck to as well. So post your email in the chat and we will select a winner in a few minutes from, from one person randomly that has posted their email in the chat. Um, Let's take some questions as well. Um, Olivia, are there any questions yet that we have not answered? Um, so one chat, well, we kind of went over the difference between ChatGBT3 and ChatGBT4.5 and versus BARD in using real-time information and kind of past information. But one, inform one question that we didn't really get to is the idea of... Um, how privacy is going to impact this and what to do if you want to upload data or notes that you would rather keep private and not have GBT share. Yeah, so um, the short answer is uh, I, would, I, I would challenge you to think about the, the, the privacy concern. Um, personally, I, I am not concerned about privacy. That said, if it's really important to you and you can afford it, then then you build your own LLM. You you build your own large language model that is is you know it's going to cost money. So I don't you know know who's asking, um, but um, but that's the best way to do it is to build your own model and then you um, have, have have privacy with your data. Um, there will be GPT models that um, that. Uh, say that their data is kept completely private and there will be some folks that believe them and some folks that don't even if they say it so the only surefire way is to build your own model mm -hmm. yeah um in addition to that it's use your own model and also there's different platforms that you can use to build your own model so like the one we were talking about before i believe it's called zendesk you could create your own chat box and you could put those prompts in um but Something like Zendesk that. has your Zendesk does have your data if you do that. You know that's not that's not private. So, um, any other questions? So someone asked, can you integrate your data with LLMs using tools like LangChain rather than creating your own LLM model from scratch? I am not familiar with that tool, but 
I, I do think, you know, it, broadly speaking, there will be a lot of open source um, uh, platforms available so that folks can can use. I mean, even today now, there's so many no code and low code platforms that you can build your own your own stuff with. Um, I think it's likely that there will be some tools that that will allow you to build your own large language model um, eventually. It's just the 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 computing power that's currently needed is a lot, which is why companies with big big resources are the the first to market. Um, and I'm sure over time that will go down. Right? Remember, in the early days of the internet. Um, the computing power required to access the internet was a lot. And um, the computing power required to access the cloud, right? So it just got easier and easier. And I, I suspect it will be the same with, uh, with GPT. And someone asked, does ChatGPT create videos too? Um, so I'm not sure if ChatGPT creates videos, but there are other GPT tools that create videos. Pretty sure Adobe has one that came out. Um, I'm not sure the quality of it, if it would be um, like a more animated video, but um, I'm sure there are other tools that can. Yeah, in, in my experience, it's, um, they're, 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 they're nascent. There's some, they're not, they're, yes, there are a bunch of tools, but we didn't include them because none of them are really that great. Um, frankly, very broadly speaking, this is a huge issue for the movie industry, which is part of the strike that's going on right now, is that essentially, studios will be able to create movies without actors. <laughs> um, and there's, it's going to be very, very interesting, but that's obviously not, that's an interesting conversation topic, but relevant to the person that asked the question, um, the answer is yes, there are some tools. No, they're not very good yet. Yes, they will get better quickly. And soon enough, you will be able to, to, to make great videos using uh, GPT. And then another person asks, what GBT is your fave to create social media posts and to manage social social posting? So, I mean, I guess my personal favorite, I guess is ChatGBT just so far, just because I could really tailor anything I want into the chat. It's so easy to give it notes. And once it gives you um, like an example, uh, you can go back and re-edit the prompt that you gave it to not include like a greeting. Like sometimes when I ask GBT to write a social media posting, it'll say in the voice of Dave Kirpin, it'll be like, hey, it's Dave Kirpin, but I could just go back and like revise it saying, no greeting, no this. So I think it's really about um, what is easiest to you to use. Yeah, so my colleagues at uh, Likeable, my former company swear by uh, mid journey. I, I don't really like it myself. Um, I have not found a, a visual asset tool that I really love, unfortunately. Let's take one more question, Olivia, and then we will give away uh, our grand prize. The art of people, 11 simple people skills that will get you everything you want. Work it, secrets for success from the boldest women in business. Likeable social media, third edition. How to delight your customers, create an irresistible brand, and be amazing on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, and more. Actually, that's the second edition cover. I missed that. But the third edition has TikTok, I promise. And get over yourself, how to lead and delegate effectively for more time, more freedom, and more success. And if you uh, do want to explore more about Apprentice, click on that link or the link that Olivia shared and schedule a demo, and we will chat more about that. The last question, Olivia. Um. Well, just really quickly, someone asked if we could download access to the recording of this. Yes, you can. If you put your email in the chat, we will send you the deck. And the fourth floor mentioned that a recording of this will be on their website. But for the last question, um, someone asked what custom API integrations are available or will be available in the coming months. So Dave, do you know anything that is coming out that will change the GBT game even more? Any new GBT tools? I mean, yes, but I don't have another hour for you guys. I mean, every single week, um, there are major developments in the space. It's wild. It's really, really exciting. It's so, It's like, like I said earlier, it's like the beginning of social media, but times a hundred. Um, I subscribe to a daily newsletter um, and I don't remember the name, but if anyone, um, I can email you or you can, um, my email is davidchooseapprentice.com if you want to email me and I can send you the newsletter I get that I get. And, and the newsletter that I get every day gives me all the latest developments literally of the day. 
it's that fast moving. And obviously some of them aren't going to mean much, but, but no, they're major developments on a, on a, um, on, a, on a weekly basis, if not daily basis. And the, the rate of acceleration of this is what to me is most exciting, most transformative, and frankly, most terrifying all, all at once. It's just, it's really, really fast moving. Olivia, before I give a number for our grand prize winner, can you tell me, because I haven't seen the chat, can you tell me roughly how many emails there are posted? Is it 20? Is it 30? Is it 10? Is it something, you know, just, just tell me roughly, and then I'll give you a number. Yes. Um, it's probably 20 to 30, or 20 to 35. Okay. So my favorite number is 18. If you could please choose from the top, the 18th email that was posted in the chat and that person is going to win our grand prize so no pressure olivia but uh because i know everyone else will be counting as well find us the 18th person uh the 18th email address in the chat and we will announce our grand prize winner in just a moment while we do that i just want to thank again um, Breen and the folks from the fourth floor soon to be the fourth effect for hosting us today. It's a really great platform and um, it's wonderful for women. But as you can see, um, you don't have to be a woman to be involved and to be a supporter, to be an ally. And so I really hope those of you that are not already familiar with the fourth floor, um, check it out and learn more. And I'm really grateful to y'all for, for hosting us. And I'm really grateful to each and every one of you guys uh, for being here today. Olivia, our grand prize winner is. I believe I sent you the email. I just wanted to double check, but that is the, or I sent you a direct message with the email. But should I announce our winner? You should. Our winner is Amar Lingala. Amar Lingala! <laughs> Congratulations. And uh, we will email everyone um, uh, that posted. Um, Olivia, grab those email addresses, please. And we will email everyone the slides. And again, on behalf of everyone at the fourth floor and um, Olivia, I thank you guys for joining us today.